I covered it because the elevator is really helpful. It's pretty hard. Cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I just saw it because I was asking one of these girls. At least you're not like
Coach. All right. Uh, first of all, congratulations to Coach Sataki and uh, the BYU team uh, on the victory. Uh, this is an incredible atmosphere. Uh, I've been in just about every ACC, SEC stadium uh, in the country, and uh, this is one of the best I've ever been in. Absolutely uh, incredible uh, atmosphere. Um, you know, really the, the tail of this game was the first half. Uh, you know, really proud of the way our guys played in the second half. I believe we had three possessions offensively in the second half. Scored on all three of them. I think one of them was a 94-yard drive, 75-yard drive, and then somewhere around a 50-yard drive. So, um, you know, it's tough. Uh, obviously, we, we've, um, you know, been in this position before. Uh, but, you know, again, uh, you know, I think, unfortunately, uh, just gave up too many uh, big plays there in the uh, first half. And, um, you know, had a couple of miscues there early offensively. But um, I just told that team, man, I'm, I'm disappointed. And uh, obviously in the uh, result, uh, you know, our goal was to come out here and win the game. And, and we had an opportunity to do that. And, uh, but man, I, I'm so proud of the way, how hard our guys played. And, um, you know, got to give them credit. I mean, look at some of the plays they made. They just, you know, their guy was a step or two faster than our guy. And he just made the play, um, you know, and on, on some of those balls. And, and they, they uh, were very clean executing on offense. Uh, give their uh, quarterback a lot of credit and uh, their offense. They were very clean and um, we just didn't make enough plays, especially early uh, there on, on defense. But man, I'm really proud of our offensive line. I mean, really, we just told those guys in the second half uh, we were going to get behind them and just run the ball. And uh, again, Jaron Mangum uh, continues to be a force for us. Man, how proud am, am I of uh, Timmy McClain in this environment for a true freshman? I mean, you're down there, fourth and goal at the one. I mean, that's as loud. I don't care, LSU, anywhere, uh, Clemson. It don't get louder than it was right down there at that goal line on that fourth and one. And to see our guys push through there, uh, th those are things that we can uh, build off of. I, I don't believe we had one false start offensively. And uh, so really give the offensive players, offensive coaching staff, uh, you know, a lot of credit there. Uh, a lot of the other teams that played in here had, had a lot of those issues. We had to go to a different snap count. Uh, we started early in the week, which is different than we've done in the past. And uh, Brad Cecil uh, did a great job up front. And uh, again, Timmy McClain, um, you know, he, he's going to learn a lot from this. He's going to be a, a better player uh, from, from this type of environment he was in today. And, and we're going to be a better team. I mean, I think you can look at it. We probably played one of the most difficult uh, non-conference schedules in the entire country, all Division One football. Uh, with NC State, obviously, see what they did today. Uh, top of team Florida is uh, what they did uh, two weeks ago. And then obviously uh, BYU, I think they're 20 and three uh, since uh, we beat them two years ago. Uh, so they've been playing some good ball. I think this is their 13th win in a row uh, in this environment. And, um, you know, I think we scored the most points they, they've given up all year. So uh, obviously disappointed we didn't come away with the win, uh, but really just proud of our guys' effort, the way they continue to fight. Um, you know, it was definitely a, an un uncommon effort. And uh, that's something we'll build off on. We'll go home and uh, get some rest and then uh, show back up Monday and get ready for conference play. So with that, I'll open up any questions. Coach, uh, those those long second half drives, what really was the key to, to keeping those drives extended? Because you the third quarter, you chewed off seven plus minutes. Obviously, in the fourth quarter, you have the nine minute drive. What really key yeah. that ability to extend those I, I think the ability to run the ball. Um, you know, we, we knew this was a team that, they play a lot of coverage, and we, we knew this was – they were not going to give us a lot of one-on-one -on -one opportunities with Weaver and, and some of our skill guys. So we knew it was going to be a run the ball, run the ball against the zone, and then take the short throws. And uh, I can't wait to go back and, and watch this tape. Um, I mean, I just – again, I think Timmy made some plays with the speed. I think there were some critical third down, fourth down plays, uh, you know, against a really good defense over here uh, with this group. But I think ultimately the ability to run the ball – uh, when they knew we were going to run the ball and we, we were able to get the yards we needed to, to keep the drives going. And that's what we're going to have to be able to do uh, this year, especially with the um, you know, lack of depth on defense. Uh, we're not going to be able to, to play as fast as we would like to play offensively. Uh, we're going to need to, to uh, continue to, to uh, eat up some clock and, and get points in the end zone. And, you know, it about worked for us uh, right there. We're just really just, you know, a couple minutes away and one stop away from having a chance to, to go down and tie the game up. It might be too early, you know, to tell. I know you got to go back and evaluate. Does does Timmy kind of cement himself as a starter tonight with his performance? Uh, 
honestly, yeah. I would say uh, as of this, watching him uh, go in, and again, he wasn't perfect, but, you know, I think he's gotten better each and every week. And again, I mean, I mean, this this environment was uh, unbelievable, and to be able to go out and, and execute and get the calls, uh, get the snap, the cadence, all those type of things. Um, and, and we've got you know a couple other really talented quarterbacks as well. Uh, you know we were we were ready uh, to to put Kate in if, if we got in a situation, uh, but Timmy really just managed. I, I felt like Timmy's feet were really the difference for us in some situations uh, where maybe we didn't have what we wanted downfield with the coverage, and he, he made some plays and. Um, um, so, yeah, I feel comfortable with him uh, being our starter moving forward. And uh, we'll still take it week by week as we go. Obviously, there's no season-long contracts or anything like that. you got to continue to, to play well. Uh, but but right now, he, he moves the ball best for our offense. And that's got to be just big for you confidence-wise, knowing that heading into, into SMU. I mean, I, obviously, things probably didn't go as quickly as you wanted them. But just to, to, to finally be able to kind of say that heading yeah. into conference play. That was kind of what we talked about at the beginning of the season. We knew we had some, some challenging games, and uh, we were going to give you know each of those guys an opportunity to get out and play. And I really wanted to come out of uh, you know the non-conference uh, feeling like we had some momentum and rhythm with somebody. And you know I don't, I don't think we were ever in that situation last year. And uh, obviously it's, it's still difficult with the, with the loss tonight. But uh, there was a lot of things that we gained. There's some confidence we gained, especially offensively there in the you know, second half. And you know just really proud of uh, how how Timmy played and managed uh, the game, managed the situation uh, against a really good defense. Coach, BYU scores 28 in the first half. What were the adjustments that were made in the second half to kind of stop those big plays from happening as much? Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's difficult. We, we knew BYU was very balanced, right? You go in some games and you're saying, well, they like to throw it a lot and we need to, uh, you know, play coverage. And in some games they run it. But we knew coming into those games that they were very balanced. They can hit you. In the passing game, if you get too many guys up there, and I mean, ultimately, it, it starts with stopping the run. And uh, you know, the frustrating part is we, we have guys there. We, we got to coach them better uh, on tackling. We got to go back and, and review what we're doing, and, and, and the guys got to tackle better because a lot of these plays, man, we, we get the yards after contact tonight is uh, you know probably the story of the night defensively. And then when you're not tackling, you're not stopping the run. Then it forces you to be a little bit more aggressive and get up there, and then he gets in a one-on-one -on -one game, and, and their guys made the plays. I mean, I, I made a living uh, with my wideouts being better than everybody else's, a step better than everybody else's DBs for 10 years. And uh, tonight, their guys, you know, were just a step behind, uh, got behind our guys. Their quarterback made the throw, and, uh, and that makes it really difficult on the defense because then you're sitting here, and now you have to go back and play coverage, and then they want to run the ball, and it just it's, – it's a tough combination. Uh, but, you know, we were able to get just enough uh, there in the second half and, uh, man, I, I love the, the block field goal there. Again, the guy's just giving great effort. Uh, at some point, uh, we're going to get that block field goal, and it's going to bounce our way. Our guy's going to pick it up and, and run it back. So, you know, those are things that we can build off of. But, yeah, definitely proud of our, our defense holding them to seven points in the second half. And, and uh, you know, hopefully uh, we can get a few of these guys uh, back healthy here over the next couple of weeks. Speaking towards the, pl the play action plays that you guys gave up, is there something that you can do schematically to, to be able to prevent those? Because it seems like that's been an issue for the last couple of weeks. Yeah, it really just turns into kind of what I described when they catch us down there with an extra hat when we're struggling to, to stop the run and we put an extra hat down there, right? And now everybody has checks and RPOs. And so they get you in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And, uh, you know, to win one-on-one, -on -one, they, they got to be just right. And they were. Now that they, made the, they made the throws and made the catches, but – you know, the, the other alternative is sit back there and cover two, but when you're not stopping the run with uh, eight or nine hats in the box, it's going to be hard to stop the run there. So, I mean, ultimately, we, we got to be able to be more sound within what we're doing. And, and whenever we get an opportunity, we got to wrap up and tackle. And then that will allow us not to have to put our guys on the back end. And then the other side, again, we're not going to make excuses, but the reality is we got two corners and one of them went down. You know, we, we signed Christian Williams to come in and be a third corner, and here is, he's not playing. So we put a true freshman out there. He got beat, uh, just like you know some other guys. He'll learn from that. And um, and then uh, I think uh, uh, somebody went down there uh, later. Uh, T.J. Robinson went down in, in the fourth quarter. So uh, hopefully, uh, you know, at some point we'll get uh, Christian back, and and uh, you know we're just we're just a step behind. And uh, so give them credit for making those plays. Uh, but it wasn't like uh, maybe where we've seen in the past last year where guys are just wide open because there's a bust. 
Uh, now we've made some progress. We're still not where we want to be, but we got guys there, and now we just got to make plays. So that's kind of the progression. And I believe that we will. It's important to those guys. They have a lot of pride. And, uh, man, they're, they're playing a lot of plays. They haven't quit. Uh, we got to coach them better, and then they just got to play better when we get in those situations, uh, and we will. Obviously, you know, the big question of the week was if Jaron Hall was going to play for BYU. Obviously, does not. You guys see Baylor Romney. What was your preparation through the week, you know, for, for fate, potentially facing him and just yeah. the uncertainty of it? Yeah, we, I mean, we, we thought uh, Hall was going to play all week. I think yesterday there was little – some rumors coming out, maybe they wasn't. Uh, but at the end of the day, with what they do, I mean, they're really running the same offense. Uh, you got to give Romney credit. Uh, he went in and he executed. It wasn't like you were playing some backup quarterback and scared to death. I mean, he went out there and executed. So uh, give him and, and that coach's staff credit for having him ready uh, to go out. I thought that, was, you know, what we definitely could have played better, uh, but you also got to tip your hat. Uh, they executed very, very well, uh, probably as, as clean as, uh, you know, uh, many of the teams I've seen play. We're going to take a couple questions from the, uh, the Zoom. Oh, go ahead, Nathan Bond. <laughs> Hey, Coach, uh, you know, in the second half, you guys were, you know, on third downs, you guys were pretty effective, 4-7, uh, and then you converted on all three fourth down attempts. And on the flip side, you know, BYU was one for three. Uh, that seemed to be an issue, uh, you know, early on this season, especially in, in last year as well. But what kind of clicked for you guys on those, you know, those money downs? Uh, I think offensively, whenever you're, whenever you're able to run the football, then it, it gets you. I think if you go back and probably look at those third downs, they're probably – uh, third and short or third and medium, right? And uh, when you don't run the ball uh, as effectively, then you get in a lot of third and longs. And uh, so I think that's that's the key for us is uh, being able to run the ball. And again, we're, we're still learning, right? We're still learning about our guys, our offense, right? With our quarterback out there, obviously Jaron and our other backs. I mean, that's kind of, you know, what these first couple of games, I think we know a lot more about kind of who we are offensively uh, after this game. Uh, but I think uh, being able to run the ball uh, kept us uh, in some third and manageable situations. And that's that's true for anybody, but uh, progress. I mean, again, you, you look at, uh, we, we've had we've had a tough uh, stretch here, right, in games and all that. And so what I look at as a head coach, obviously I'm disappointed with the record. It is what it is. But are we getting better or are we getting worse, right? And so uh, I'm not proud of the record, but I'm proud of, of the way our guys have pushed and, and uh, feel like we're definitely getting be better in some areas. Still got a little ways to go, but, um, you know, I want to see our guys continue to show progress as we get ready to, to start conference play, and I'm confident we will. Go ahead, Scott. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, uh, part of the problem with the, with the losses is that you've got off to a slow start. <clears throat> Is there any way uh, that you can address that? Uh, I mean, you got yourself in a big hole, you know, tonight, and you battled back. It was great. But, if, man, if you could just kind of, you know, get off to a quicker start, it might help, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I agree. Can, can, you, can you speak yeah, I, to that? That, that, that was our message. I mean, our, our goal was to uh, come out, obviously, and play well early. We talked about that all week. Coming on the road, we needed to come out and, and play well early, and uh, and we didn't. And ultimately, that ended up being the difference in this game. And you know, uh, when you're playing a really good team like BYU, that's won 12 home games in a row and all that stuff, uh, you've got to you've got to be able to execute for four quarters. And um, you know, ultimately, we did not, and that ended up being the difference in the game. Thank you. Uh, Coach, uh, Demarcus Gregory kind of comes in and, and had some real vital catches on, uh, you know, in, in the second quarter and in, in the second half, uh, including a couple on that long 94-yard uh, scoring drive. Uh, was it nice to, you know, finally see him kind of get back into the, the offense and with Latrell being out, seeing someone else kind of step up in that in that role? Uh, yes, I thought it was, you know, uh, uh, DeMarcus is a guy that uh, did some good things for us in fall camp and uh, just kind of didn't maybe didn't have a whole lot of opportunities uh, early on. Uh, Weaver was banged up a little bit, and um, so it gave uh, DG some opportunities to go in. And I mean, there were some key plays there where we purposely put him in to, to uh, see if he can go make the plays that he'd been making in practice. And so I think for us to be able to gain more confidence, uh, you know, and uh, I thought we – 
you know, for the most part, uh, with the timing and all that, we threw the ball well. They, they defensively, they were, they were schemed to, to kind of not let us uh, go on some deep shots. Uh, but I thought we were able to hit some some nice balls in, in some of the holes. And and um, I think uh, DG will be a guy that we can continue to, to count on here as the year moves forward. Hey, Coach, uh, you, you had the decision to make after that final touchdown. Go for the onside kick, try to get the, steal the possession back or kick it deep kick it deep and play defense. What kind of went to your decision-making? How, how much does uh, Coach Chicago have in, in that uh, kind of input yeah, and, and I, advice there? Yeah, I, I made the call. And ultimately, it's because we didn't have any timeouts left. We had no timeouts. And, um, you know, as good as they've been moving the ball on offense, as clean as their execution has been, um, I just thought – and really, I felt like we kind of had them on their heels. And so, at some point, the ball's going to bounce our way and uh, we're going to get some breaks. And – you know, I told our guys we didn't come 2,300 miles to, to uh, play conservative. You know, we're going to be aggressive. And, uh, unfortunately, you know, we go for it early there on fourth down, the quarterback sneak and, and fumble the snap. Uh, but the message to our guys was, you know, we're going to be aggressive. You can't come into an environment like this and not be aggressive. But ultimately, the reasoning into that was the fact that we had no timeouts. Uh, and uh, I didn't think we'd stop them enough uh, to be able to, to go with that area and we really worked the onside kick. We didn't quite have it time the way we want to, but we've been working on that. And uh, ultimately, uh, we didn't execute it. Any other questions for Coach? Does, does it feel like two? Uh, does it feel like two AM out there right now? Because man, I, I'm struggling. How about you, Coach? <laughs> It, it will be when I when we, whenever we land about nine o'clock and I go to Savannah's birthday party at one thirty bar. Uh, it'll feel like two a.m. But uh, right now, no. I mean, I, I'm I'm still just um, you know, obviously disappointed loss. I'm so proud of our guys uh, in that environment. What I just saw right there uh, that, that gives me a, a lot of uh, optimism and hope for what's to come. And uh, so uh, we'll we'll uh, pack up, head home, and uh, we'll get ready to go next week. Take one more for Will. Yeah. Any quick update on TJ Robinson? Did you see what happened with him? Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't have an update. I just heard he was out. I haven't got to talk to our trainers. Okay. Hopefully, he'll be back. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I not it's sweet to be in and everything. How's the trip been? It's been good. It's been good. It's just the hour. All right, well, we've got Jared Mangum for everybody online. Go ahead and start in the room right now. Uh, you had some flair there on your last touchdown. I know things kind of weren't over yet. I mean, just, just how gratifying was it to get, get in there on fourth and one right there? Um, being a big back thing. They counted on me to get in there, and uh, I did. Um, I felt like I got in there the other one, but it's whatever. So yeah, you got you looked like you had more success, kind of just outside of the ten yard line, like you were, you know, starting to get some momentum going. Mm -hmm. Just if you could touch on that, and just kind of how you felt in general. Um, I feel like overall, like us running the ball, so we did a, a pretty decent job. Some things we could still clean up, different things like that. But I feel like overall, we kind of controlled the box in the second half. And I'm just overall, I just feel like we just did a good job overall. What can you say about Timmy and just, you know, we really got a chance to see just his ability to extend plays. Mm -hmm. I mean, just how, how, how was, how did you see it? You know, how was he able to do that from your mm -hmm. perspective? Like I said, when Timmy has the ball in the sand, special things happen when he's able to extend drives like that, it's, it's able for us to put points up on the board. So whenever he does things like that and scramble out of the pocket to make plays for us with his feet, or with throwing the ball also, that just helps us um, march down the field and uh, finish drives. Jaron, you had the ball uh, carried it 26 times. Do you think as the game goes on, you get better and you enjoy having that number of carries as the game progresses? Um, or do you like it to where it's kind of a split attack with the backfield where everybody's getting touches? 
I had 26. 26. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even. I promise you, I didn't know that. That's the most I ever had. I was, I was, I was just looking that up right now. Yeah, that's <laughs> the most. Yeah, that's, that's the most. I'm looking that up right now. I actually, that is the most I ever had. I've never touched. Um, past like 15, I believe. So 16. Um, oh, oh, 16. Oh, so. So yeah, twenty six. Oh, that's crazy. I didn't, I didn't um, know that. Um, but like I said, uh, overall, I feel like our uh, our running back room. Obviously, I feel like we got different threats like that, and um, obviously we didn't have flex up there today. Um, so we can't wait to get him back. But like I said, anyone, any running back that steps on the field, I feel like we can just all go out and perform. Like as you seen, Batty at one hundred ten last week, and this week, you know, it's just kind of going with the flow of the different things like that. You guys held the ball for a long time, especially in that, you know, that second half. I mean, just was the mentality to go in there and, and really just have some long drives to, to wear them down? Uh, the mentality was to not quit. Um, we played a sloppy first half, uh, so we got to clean that up. I feel like we started off slow a lot of our games, and I feel like if we come out fast, play all four quarters, we'll have a different outcome. Um, we can't dig ourselves in holes like that. So, um I'm just, I just can't wait to get back to the drawing board. Just really just put everything together. How do you flip the script and, and, and start fast next week at SMU? Um, watch the tape, go over, see the things that we missed, um, make corrections. Um, don't be afraid to make those corrections. Uh, don't be defensive. Uh, whenever you see that you did something wrong and the coach is trying to correct you, different things like that, and just move on. That's the biggest thing, like move on. It's one You're trying to be one to know every week. This week we didn't have enough like that. So next week we're gonna to try to be one and up. Any questions online? Anything for Jared online? Uh, All right, I, th I think we're good. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Sean. I saw Nick Stampede just went live. Which, who's Scott's from Hill? Mm -hmm. Who's Scott's from? Uh, the Times. Hurt. That's really okay. Who is that? Been a, a freelancer. That's why, okay. Yeah, because I was like, why not? Why not? Yeah. You guys saw that corner suit at 6 a.m.? Yeah. I'll fall back to the one day. I'm just, I'm, I'm exploring tomorrow. There you go. They're down like south southern Utah or just sticking up around here? Probably spend some time in Salt Lake City. Uh, okay. So that's where I'm playing. And then uh, who knows? I might end up in Wyoming. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Yellowstone's pretty. Oh, well, I don't know if I'm going that far north, but yeah. I really was so close when I was looking at all that. So yeah, you got Yellowstone, Jackson Hole, you got Zion's down. So everybody keeps Utah. telling me about yeah. Jackson. Jackson's, I've never been. Since I was like three years old, so I don't, I couldn't tell you, but I've heard it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah originally, um, I'm here with our photographer from the site. I was gonna come up with my fiance and do something like that with Jackson, oh, yeah. and then that just got cut. So I was like, oh, never mind. Just gonna use a straight business trip. But we were talking. We're like, it's already midnight now. I'm like, we might not even sleep because our flight's at six thirty. So we gotta be back in Salt Lake by you know four thirty or so and drop the car off and everything. So. Sure. Yeah, but he's going to the Jets game. Today. It's in Denver, so he's flying out at 6 a.m. There's that smile. <laughs> 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 McLean, take questions that are on the start. Um, shoot, man. It, you look at it, fourth to go from the one. I mean, probably the loudest, one of the loudest environments in college football. You're true freshman, second start. What's going through your mind? Oh, just don't turn the ball over, just execute. That's all. Really. Yeah, you had that early fumble. Was that weighing in your mind, or did you move, move past it? Uh, just move past it. Just that's all. Just move past it. You know, plays next play, next play with time. Um, 
you know, 1724 is not a bad night whatsoever. I mean, just we really got a chance to see your, you know, ability to extend plays when you're trying, when you're scrambling and stuff like that, just, I guess, you know, another what's going through your mind at that point. <clears throat> just, you know, first, first I got to, you know, go through my read. If, like I said, one, two, three, not there. Then I just got to extend the play a little and just be an athlete. When you, when uh when you got you know six four two hundred fifty pound dudes just kind of flailing all over the place trying to catch you does that make you feel good? Yeah, you know just making a mess, you know. Yeah. Do you look like you're just having like the time of your life out there? I mean, is this just kind of is it, how are you kind of dealing with this on a week to week basis? Oh, uh, you know, just you know, <clears throat> Coach Rice and Coach Guy have a good game plan for you know. I just got to go out there execute, you know, study game plan, you know, and then. About that, have fun. You know, Coach Dan's do a good job. You know, of keeping but like mentoring me and stuff. So you know, praise them. So you know, so yeah. Is the is the game kind of slowing down a little bit for you? <clears throat> oh yeah, it is a little bit. You know, um, it is slowing down a little bit. You know, it's not going fast. You know, I gotta, you know, for every snap, I gotta take a deep breath and just um, just execute really. Timmy, we saw um during. A lot of players are in the game going to each offensive lineman and talking to them beforehand. <clears throat> uh, was that really due to the environment, or is that something that you know you do as a team throughout every game during the season? Oh, uh, that'll do to the environment. Um, you know, it's a lot of large crowd, big crowd, so you know, you know, we switched up our cadence a little bit. So you know, gotta you know just talk to the offensive line for every like before every play and just tell them what to do. Really. Now you guys are down 20 to 6 at half. What do you tell your team the second half right now? Uh, start strong, stay strong, finish strong. What was that, you know, the, the play call where Xavier gets the reverse? I mean, if you guys have to take a time, timeout right before that, was that the original play call before the timeout, or, or was that kind of what you wanted to do the whole way? Oh, uh, That was, you know, I think it was uh, – I think Coach Scott, you know, called it. You know, it was a call we had in practice. We just waiting to use it for – a critical situation like this, so you know we executed. So that was worked out pretty well for us. Without giving any specifics away, are there could there be more plays like that in the future? Maybe I'll call it plays. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. <clears throat> um, I'll take a question from the Zoom. Hopper. Go ahead, guys. Go ahead, guys. Hey, so uh, before the game, if you can just explain how how did you feel? with your nerves and how did you feel as the game went on? Did you get more relaxed? How did you feel, you know, before, during, and and after, for that matter? Um, I was really confident about the game plan that we had uh, the whole week. So um, I was going through the game real confident about myself. You know, there's a lot of things I could have done better. You know, a lot of miseries that I have. But, uh, you know, it was just going to the game real confident. You know, got to make better decisions. So. Did, did you relax as the game went on? Did you? <clears throat> yeah, I did relax. You know, I, like I said, you know, before every play, I got to take a deep breath and you know just go go ahead and execute the play. Thank you. Okay. Anything else for Timmy? They got one more. If they don't. They say they got one more. I got one more. Oh, um. <laughs> You have quickly become a fan favorite. You know, everybody is 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 loving you all over social media. I mean, just what can you say about the fan base and just kind of how they've rallied around you uh, in these four games that you've been a USF for? Oh, um, a lot of fan base. You know, just keep pulling for the team, the coaching staff. You know, just keep you know keep our spirits lifted up. You know, it's, it's good. You know, fan base, fan base like that. You know, it just makes us better every week. So just keep on doing what y'all do. All right. Thanks, Timmy. Thanks, Timmy. Hey, Timmy. <laughs> I'm trying to, like, I'm, like, trying to think of questions on the fly to make it, like, worthwhile for these guys. So I hate the fact that like they come in here for like a minute and then leave right after. I was trying to blank. <laughs> I'm looking at the statue and I'm like, all right, what do I gotta say? What do I gotta ask? I thought there'd be more people. It's two o'clock in the morning. So oh. I don't want to take too much of your guys' time because you guys are the ones who are gonna be writing about it. I want to make sure you guys get the questions asked that you guys are 
I got to write about that. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I asked, like, I asked the beginning of the season, like, if we were going to do road games, if, like, road games, if we were going to have an in-person event, because it makes it that much more worth it in my mind. Yeah. Because that way the coaches and players, like, see you travel 2,300 miles across the country. 1,900, however much Utah is from Tampa. Man, we see you every week. <laughs> All right, take a question for Xavier. Uh, that's uh, that fourth down call. You know, take take me through the, the the play calling of it. You know, what what was the the conversation? You guys took a timeout right before that. What was what was going through everybody's mind? Mm -hmm. On the score, I was just, was just thinking about getting it in the end zone. You know, we came that far all the way down the field. We had to get it in the end zone. So, you know, we actually ran the same play that we called the first time. Just wanted to look take a, take a look at the defense and stuff. So, it was a good call. We had to execute. I mean that that that. Had them off guard. I mean, mm -hmm. you kind of almost could have waltzed in the end zone there. I mean, just when you saw that open green, I mean, just how did it feel? Oh, it felt good. I was, just, I see um, Mitch out there getting the block still in the air. So I just ran straight to the straight to the corner of the pylon. You guys hung with the number 15 in the team in the country. I mean, after a slow start against NC State, slow start against Florida. Just what what does this show you guys to be able to, to have this kind of performance late in the game tonight? Oh, you know, still not, still not satisfied. You know, we didn't win, but of course, we we improve it every week. You know, we just, we just a couple plays away. You know, we just, we real close to being a, a great football team. You know, we not as far as people think we are though. So we just, it's just a couple plays. You watch film. It's just a couple little details that we need to clean up. DG came up big in that second half. Yes, sir. I think he had a he had a play where he obviously wasn't the intended receiver and just comes and snatches a ball right out of right out of mid there. Just how important was his performance, especially in that third, fourth quarter? It really, played, it really, played. you know, we, we've been expecting that for him, just waiting for the time to come, you know, but he came out there and showed us what he could do. So, you know, I was real, real proud of him because, you know, it's going to be a one-two punch, me and him out there. So, real proud of him. Is that kind of how, how, how you all envision it being? A, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Been talking about that. Okay. Xavier, uh, McLean at quarterback, what do you think of his game uh, and just, like, what that game kind of looks like? with um, just what he can do, both passing and running the ball. I love his game. You know, he, he fits the offense very well. You know, um, he makes a play out of nothing. When it's a broken play, he, he roll out, scramble, and throw it down the field. He got, got his eyes down the field, so he's not looking just to run. So, you know, his game is really important to this offense, as you can see. And do you think with the game plan today, um, I know you guys kept it pretty much short. Uh, Coach Scott talked about what they were trying to do to attack BYU's defense. Um, do you think – with an offense like this that you guys can move the ball, whether it's short passes, long passes, or is this offense comfortable the way it looked tonight? Most well, definitely. Well, definitely. We just got to start faster. And then you, you'll see a different a different team out there. If we start faster, it'll be a whole different game. But, you know, I, I, I like the offense. I like the speed. You guys, the offensive line didn't have a false start tonight in a hostile environment. Mm -hmm. I mean, just uh, how nice was that to see? Amazing. You know, offensive line been been showing, showing a lot this year. Uh, you know, we've been talking about it all week that, you know, this is going to be probably the loudest stadium we ever played in. Yeah. So we've been keying in on, on, on making mistakes, not making mistakes, and just uh, not jumping off sides and stuff like that. So we did really well. They did really well at that, too. Did you find it maybe a little bit harder since you're outside away from the play? You know, what as a wide receiver, what goes into that to, to make sure that you don't fall start? Uh, I don't really – for some reason when I'm out there, I don't really hear all the noise. I'm just locked into the signals and stuff like that. So I don't really – pay attention to all that other noise and outside fat is I'm pretty sure that's what the resident team does as well. So it's probably why they ain't jump outside. <laughs> uh, in your collegiate career, was there any environment that you've been in that compares to this environment tonight in terms of crowd noise, stuff like mm -hmm. that? I would say this was this was definitely top three. This was definitely the one on my list, but I say UCF and SC State was also a big game for me. Florida was a big game, but I feel like they all feel the same. It's just People out there yelling. Yeah. <laughs> so just got to lock in. All right, we'll take questions from online. Scott first, go ahead. 
Hey, so you talked about how you, you know, you need to start quicker. What can you do to get, you know, get yourselves going quicker, you know? I say execution, execute plays, you know. It's just, like I said, small details that we need to clean up and, and certain things that we need to um, clean up. If we clean that up, we'll, start, we'll be out there starting off way faster. But once we start off fast and get, get the offense going, it'll be a whole different ballgame. Do you think you guys maybe just are a little bit – have been a little bit tight to start the games. I don't know. Tight, like what you mean is tight? Well, just like uh, maybe you want it too much or uh, trying too hard or something to start out with, you know, and then maybe you settle in as the game goes on. Could you play much better in the second halves of, of your games? I mean, I, I wouldn't say we played tight. You know, we, we had the same game plan the whole, the whole game. It's just second half, we just executed way better. Uh, trusted to trust the game plan way better. So we just got to put it all together now for four quarters. All right. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, Ron? Yes, good. I appreciate you. Thank, thank you. Thanks, sir. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.